Hey guys, Dean Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We're finally winding down in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, hitting that wonderful climax you've all been working so hard to achieve. But first, I told you in Victory Road I was looking for an item and I couldn't find it. I actually did find it. And I speak in the episode incorrectly that I didn't have it. So the item that I was looking for was the Razor Claw. That is the item that I was searching for. You need the Razor Claw in order to evolve Sneasel, but you have to make sure that you level up Sneasel at nighttime with the Razor Claw being held. So let's get what we came for. I figured Rare Candy would just be quicker. And, you know, sometimes when you are about to evolve, you screech. Here we go. I'm kind of mixed about how this is how this works. Like I kind of get the idea of like hold items being necessary for evolution of Pokemon. I'm okay with that. That doesn't bother me. But all the extra steps that they tried to add in this game to make them interesting or cool, I don't really care for too much. But we like do care about. It's the Sharp Claw Pokemon. They live in cold regions, forming groups of four or five that hunt prey with impressive coordination. And once again, you get another shot at Screech if you want it. And we are not interested. Okay. So that was pretty nice. Finally have a fully evolved team. Suzanne was kind of falling behind a little bit, so it is nice to have that. And look how fast and strong we are. And really good special attack too, pretty nice. So that should do it. Time to ride. Beeberl up this waterfall one last time. There is going to be post-game content, and there's actually probably going to be, once I do all this, there's actually going to be post-post-game content, and what that means might uh, be confusing now, but I'll explain later as we enter Castle Rocket Pop with that low-res Pokeball image there, and it's just a regular Pokemon Center, I believe, but... You can buy all kinds of goodies, which I'm going to do. I don't need Pokeballs. Here we go. It's, I, th I believe, I believe it's all the things you could possibly want. So, I don't want to overdo it here. I don't think I'm going to need to revive my Pokemon this many times, but, you know, 40 seems like a pretty fair amount. Might as well just buy full heals because it takes care of everything if you're in a pinch. And we'll buy... I mean, I have all these Poke Monies that I'm not going to really use on anything else. I did almost burn through all my repels, and I have less than I did at the end of the last episode. Why is that? Well, in order to get through Victory Road, I probably didn't need to do this. But I... Uh, I went to get that rare candy. I had to go find it. And I actually went all the way back through... Victory Road. So I don't want to hear any of you saying I don't do anything for this family because I put in the work for us. I put in the table. All right, anyway. So got ourselves plenty of goodies. I don't know if we'll need anything else really. That seems pretty good. And I think everybody's already healed up. Yeah, so I'm feeling pretty awesome about this. This is your last shot to Pick your dream team of six, don't forget. That's all you get. Okay. Can you stop looking at my loose Pokemon, please? Jeez, what a creep. All right, let's talk to the attendant here and... Oh, just kidding. Oh, I totally forgot about this. Well, you got a berry battle before you do anything. And Barry's got a full team of six now, so here we go. Barry's about to get wrecked. R-E-K-T. That's a blast from the past. Oh, and see, Weavile looks super cool. Oh, it changes abilities when it evolves, though. That kind of sucks. The other vault, the ability we had last time was more better. Man, we're still not faster. Oof. Gee, Star Raptor is quick. I keep trying to, like, convince myself that... I'm doing something wrong here, but uh, looks looks like a 
Yeah, let's get Steven in there. That was pretty underwhelming. A good start to this episode. We're about to take on the Elite Four, and we're about to lose to Barry. Pretty uncool, but we get to hear Barry's theme one last time, so that's fun. Well, one last time for here. I think there's probably moments where you will fight Barry in the afterlife, the post-game content. Alright, let's see what you got, Barry. What is he doing? Well, if we were a thunderous Pokemon, we'd worry about that. What am I doing? Let's go ahead and use the best we've got. Man, this Star Raptor is super fast. I guess that's kind of the downside of... Most of our Pokemon not being very quick. They're sharp. Don't, don't get me... Wait, wait, wait. Why does he... Oh my goodness, what does he have? Focus Sash. Alright, so Focus Sash is kind of an interesting item. It basically keeps you alive with 1 HP in the same way that we have been having our Pokemon kept alive unfairly with the game just being like, alright, hang in there! That's It's so cheap, and I really hope that it doesn't trigger during this Elite Four battle. Like, if I'm gonna lose, I wanna lose fair and square. That seems like the right thing to do. Also, I don't really want these levels, because I don't want to be over-leveled. Alright, I don't know if I really have anything good for Snorlax, but here is a good time to use this. So I believe Barry's Munchlax must have evolved here. He's finally hit the plateau of evolution, and I think it's a friendship evolution, so that's kind of sad that it took this long. But anyway, this is a great opportunity for the Leech Seed Toxic combo. There's Pokemon out there that are like Snorlax, where maybe you don't have a good counter for it, and it's got oodles of noodles of HP. So this is a time when you're going to want to have something like this, where you can slowly whittle it down and then also use this to stall and maybe buff your team back up. Let's see what we got here. Oh boy, high horsepower. That's a new move. I don't know if that was added in this generation or not, or later, but I've been playing through Arceus, as I always like to mention, just in case you guys forgot that I'm playing that. And it's on a lot of ground-type Pokemon, and it is excellent. It is an excellent move, and it does a ton of damage. But now we're asleep. That's pretty uncool. Not really much we can do. Although, at this point of the game, I don't really use any of the berries. I just bought a ton of those full heals. So instead of naturally healing my Pokemon, I'm just going to cover them in chemicals. Because why not? It's the way of the future. But yeah, Leech Seed is very nice. It doesn't heal a ton, which is fine. But what it does do is every turn, just in case you are feeling like you're in kind of some danger, it will bail you out a little bit. And then it gives you the chance to, you know, throw on a Giga Drain, maybe? So, like I said, we're not going to be able to take out this Snorlax very easily, but we do have ways of slowly whittling its health on the side. And because it's going to die to Leech Seed and or Toxic on this turn, the combination is really good. It's a little cheap, but whatever. I don't have... I mean, I guess I could have used Charlie. I didn't even think about that. I was like, man, I don't have any Fighting-type Pokemon, and I absolutely do. Whatever. It's gonna be tough, though, going forward, because I'm not gonna... I'm gonna have all of these Pokemon on my team that are present for the Elite Four, and then I'm gonna go back to some of the other forlorn Team B members after we're all done for post-game, and they're all gonna be, like, 15 levels behind, so... Got that to look forward to. Bunch of grind. No, I'm not going to do that. Let's go ahead and use Earthquake. We are like the perfect foil to Rapidash. What was that? All right, well, apparently Earth Earthquake has gotten Samuel feeling pretty excited. And as much as I wasn't sure that a Gastrodon was going to actually make it on my team, it's actually a pretty effective Pokemon. It's not the fastest, but it is very, um... It's very versatile. I really like that. It's got a lot to it. Okay, so here we go. 
see if we're going to get the whole team involved in this final battle. Man, my team just must be incredibly slow, or Barry must have the fastest versions of everything. Jeez. That's one of the things that I was afraid of going into the Elite Four was you saw a lot of my Pokemon are unfortunately speed down natures. And as I was playing through the game, I did say that I'm not going to cheese it and hunt for specific nature Pokemon. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I ain't doing that. So I'm just going to stick with what I have. Oh man, Heracross is awesome. One of the things that I was doing recently, having played Arceus, was there are alpha Pokemon in that game. And that basically just means they're a little bit bigger. Sometimes they have better stats, but like physically they are larger in the game. And they're usually a higher level compared to everything else in the area. There was an Alpha Heracross. I don't know what I was doing. I was just kind of wandering around. I'm, I try not to fast travel in games if I can avoid it so that way. It forces me to actually explore. So I was doing that and I ran into an Alpha Heracross. And in that game, for whatever reason, they gave them these kind of bright glowing red eyes. And if I was a kiddo, that would be absolutely terrifying. It's just whew, not my cup of tea. Very terrifying. But here we go. Napoleon. Napoleon is probably my favorite design of the Sinnoh starters. It looks really good. Somehow it's not faster than Steven, but it is very tanky. I was able to get a full Thunderbolt. That's impressive. We're probably about to get knocked out here. Yes. That is super uncool. And we'll have a chance to heal before this bat. Wait, what? Before the upcoming battles. I shouldn't say before this battle. We're in the middle of it. We did have a chance to heal before this battle. That already happened. All right, Barry. Oh, don't say that. Don't say how tight you are. I don't want to know. Okay, anyway. Let's go ahead and get Steven healed up. Bought all those revives only to burn a couple of them in this pointless fight. That's awesome. And there's another example of cheesing. I don't know. I'm assuming this Empoleon... This Empoleon has leftovers. That's a whole item that will, over time, gradually restore your health. The downside to Empoleon is that because it's part steel type, it's not effective with us using grass moves on it, but that's okay. Did just enough, and I wasn't trying to get one of our Pokemon, or in this case two, one level above everybody else. It makes it uneven now. Thanks, Barry. But we win. That's right. Get good, Barry. Get good. Okay. Well, I won't. So if I do, I have to start over. Well, I have to go buy a couple more revives. Thanks, Barry. But anyway, this is your final shot, once again, to buy anything you need and max out all your, your stores of items, your hold items as well. Don't forget to do that. When you go into the fights, you will have a moment prior to fighting where you can make sure that your team is, is in ship shape. But we will, we will heal because Barry did knock us around a little bit. We want to make sure that we have a, a nice big PP for the Elite Four. One of the things I need to make sure that I add. Where is it? I pick this up. I need to go back and find it, actually. The Icicle Plate, because Suzanne's the only Pokemon that doesn't have an item to boost stats. That's actually in the area right outside whatever the Snow City is. I don't remember its name. You can find it from the guy that gave you... Um, Rock Climb, I think, or whatever it is, like TM100. He'll appreciate your your sincerity and honesty, and he will give you that as a as a prize, I guess. Should always reward good people. Okay, so that was kind of anticlimactic. I really like the way they do it in Red and Blue. Here we go. In red and blue, you have to go through all those different zones, and it's very triumphant music. This is pretty good, though. Oh, 
All right, everybody, who is ready for the final challenge? Be really stupid if I cut the episode right here. We're gonna try to get all of this done right here, right now. Will I be able to do it? I don't know. But uh, let's make it happen, everybody. Up first is Aaron A. Aaron with his sleeveless vest. I guess all vests are sleeveless. Makes him a vest. But he likes bug Pokemon. So let's see if we can bug him a little bit. Hopefully this goes well. The gym leader music is back. I wish they would have made it special for the Elite Four, but they don't. They don't. But these are all going to be very tough. All the Pokemon in the Elite Four do have held items, so it could potentially cause some issues. Ooh, it's not. I forgot that it's not weak to ice again. Oops. Let's get Miguel on there. Well, that's a good start, huh? My bad. Just wasted a turn there. Hopefully this isn't, uh... Okay, we're all square. See, the game was like, you know what? You made you made one little accident. Is we're, we're just gonna forget about it. We're gonna pretend like that never actually happened. Thanks, game. But these fights are all really good. The Elite Four in this game, I don't want to say they're unremarkable, but it's not its not too bad. Make sure you've got a good mixture on your team. You're definitely going to want to have ground and ice moves. I will recommend that, that's for sure. And you're going to get a ton of levels out of this, so that's something to be mindful of. Ooh, a Heracross. Well, we're already kind of in good shape here. We already fought Fairy's Heracross, and I'm sure Aaron's is probably better, but... Miguel is actually the right choice. Ooh, okay. That's one of the things that's tough about the Elite Four is that their movesets aren't very versatile, so you're not gonna be able to get away with... What? Oh, I bet it knows. Okay, so he did... <laughs> that's actually an interesting, an interesting dynamic, so... Because all the Elite Four Pokemon in this game have hold items, I don't know if they did in the original, they kind of gave them competitive movesets, which I think is interesting. So, his Heracross has a Flame Orb on it, which is going to burn it. And I'm pretty sure that by being burnt, which we just burnt it, not literally, but it wanted to use Facade. And I'm pretty sure Facade is a move that when you are afflicted with a status condition that it makes the move twice as powerful so that's a pretty interesting tactic i didn't know that that was a thing i don't know if going forward if the teams are as kind of competitive as that or if it's just like a move that's gonna boost attack power or something like that but that was pretty interesting and pretty good so pretty solid for game freak to do that makes things a little bit more challenging in this game for children i mean they gotta balance that out a little bit, right? One thing I will say though is these arenas are kind of boring. I mean, I like the little thing on the sides, the little beams that are popping out, but not super cool. I don't know if we've seen a Vespa Quinn. Um, so a Vespa Quinn is the evolution of Combi. And okay, great. Sorry, it's the evolution of female combi. Male combi in this game are 100% useless. So that's wonderful, but this is the evolution of female combi. They're the ones that have the little triangle above the the one's head, the one that's on the bottom, I believe. That's how you know that you've got it. Or you can just see the, the little red female symbol. Get yourself a Vespa Quinn. It's pretty good. This is actually bad that it's stacking up all these defenses. I should probably start whittling it down here. Oof. Yeah, two of those defend orders is going to make this a little tricky, but we did paralyze it. So that's paying dividends already. We're feeling good. I'm not too worried about this yet. I was concerned about my levels going into this that I wasn't going to have my team be on par with what we're facing. Oh, get out of here. Also, I feel like there's a bunch of better items you could get to put on a Vespa Quen, then a Citrus Berry. 
Vesper Coin's an interesting Pokemon. I don't know if I would say it's good, but it's definitely interesting. And it has these moves, Defend Order, Attack Order. I feel like there's probably one more that it has, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Oh my goodness. And you also have to be careful because these Elite Four members, they do have max potions, full restores. I think they only have one item or two each. Oh, that would have knocked it out too. So that's a little bit on the cumbersome side. Sometimes these battles can be a bit of a war of attrition. They're going to heal themselves, but I have way more full restores. So if they want to try to have a siege and they want to try to stall me out, I'm going to stall them out, which makes for really good gameplay. Everybody wants to see that. This is one of those times where I wish I had an electric move that was slightly stronger than Thunderbolt. I do not yet. Steven does learn some really, really good electric moves that are physical based, which would line up better with its move set and its stat flow. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I mean, I do, but I don't know the words. I'm struggling here. Okay, so I think one more. Oh my goodness. Aaron, that is enough. I've had enough out of you. Clearly, this Vespa coin has good special defense. I'm actually going to switch Steven out because this is getting really annoying. I do want to hit it with a Thunder Wave, but I need to hit it with something obviously stronger. I don't know if it's... It has been raising both of its defenses. However... Okay. Well, that actually helps. Now I can swap out at my leisure. Who is... Let's get Miguel in there. Hopefully we can eat one attack. I don't know if the moves that Vespaquen knows are... We can use some Malk. Malk is still applicable. I don't know if the moves that Vespaquen has... If they're bug-based or not. They might be normal-based. But we are thrilled to bits. So who knows acrobatics? That's a flying move. Pretty decent one. Was given... We were given the opportunity to learn such a move for Charlie, but I chose not to. The, there are better options for Charlie. All right, so hopefully it's regular defense. Regular isn't as good. Okay, still is. Great. You might have to bring in the big guns for this one. As long as it doesn't know a rock move, it does no power gem. Okay. Oof. See, my problem is, is I would love to use Brave Bird. I just hope it doesn't knock Miguel out. A double knockout would not be very useful, but thankfully, because we do have the experience all in this game, even if we do unfortunately faint, which I hope we do not, the rest of the team will still get experience. Okay. Doing, doing okay. And I do believe that was his ace. We're all up to 55. 55? Ooh. Night Slash. I don't know if we have a better move than Foul Play. Foul Play is really good. Um, but... 95? And I mean, we're already... No, you know what? We'll come back to it. If I really want that, I'll hard scale it later. But for now, we're going to hold off. Was that it? No. Okay, so we still have Drapion. Drapion's not a bug type. But you'll see that some of the Pokemon in this Elite Four and... They always do this in the Elite Four, and I think it's probably just to preserve the fact that if you fought only the same type of Pokemon, it might get a little samey and kind of boring. There's a lot of Pokemon in this specific Elite Four. Not this trainer, obviously. Like, this is pretty decent. But there's quite a few Pokemon in this Elite Four that don't really make sense. So, you'll see that eventually. But Aaron basically swept him. Oh, we got a critical hit, too. So, thanks. Samuel, hopefully that wasn't the game cheesing that. I really wanted that to be legit. So there's that. Okay. You will concede defeat. The election is over. Okay. So I guess, you know, I don't think Drapion is super unfair because Skarupi is part bug type. All right. Pick yourself up back. Back to work, champ. Now that makes it sound like 
There's gonna be three trainers in a row. There's not. So while I heal, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just explain something. In the original... Oh, I didn't revive Steven. Oops. My bad, I forgot. Sorry, Steven. You missed out on some experience. That's okay. Steven was actually overleveled, so... Let's go ahead and have everybody have a nice glass of milk. And... We'll use a Hyper Potion on Miguel to get everybody 100%. Almost. I actually did the math in my head and I was wrong. <laughs> Oops. Alright, that's close enough. Okay. So, in the original Diamond and Pearl, you could use Surf here on this door in the Japanese version. Do I have the Japanese version of Pearl? Of course I do. So you could use Surf on this door. They did fix it in the English versions. And when you do that, you'd surf into this void, which essentially let you go anywhere outside the map. And there were tutorials out there, tons of them, of how to essentially go into this void and you would be using these step counters that you have on your on your po catch to go left a thousand spaces and and up 1500 spaces or something like that something ridiculous okay so this lady kind of looks like the maybe the sister of agatha her name's bertha so that's a good name she has ground type pokemon agatha was the ghost gym or ghost elite four member all right, so it's time to put this geriatric back in the nursing home, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you could do that, and you could actually wind up going to parts of the map that you're not supposed to. They definitely patched that out pretty quick, but there were some legendary Pokemon that were event only that you could catch in Pearl because of that. That's the only way to get them at the time, unless you lived in Japan and, you know, had access to that stuff. But I don't currently do not. But I do kind of like the background here. The kind of particles that are flowing up through this, but I just feel like they could have done more. At least on the overworld, like if they weren't going to program it into the actual gym fight, that's okay. But give me something here, you know? Give me give me something to, to play with. And I feel bad because I don't want to have to just use Bart to sweep this team, but it's kind of hard not to. Because everything on her team is incredibly weak to Bart. Ooh, whoa, what on earth was that? Okay. So, that made my brain really confused for a second. Because I was doing damage to Whis... 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 And I thought that was being damage done to me for some reason. Like, I thought that was Bart having its... Its HP bar go down. So my brain played a very na naughty trick on me, very naughty. Wow, that was really confusing. I was like, man, why did that Giga Drain hurt me so much? I'm like, wait, I'm the one who used it. Okay, it's been a long day, everybody. Forgive me or not, your choice. But we're doing pretty well so far. Do Suda Wudo. Let's uh, let's get some let's get some variation in here. We don't want to make this super boring. I'm trying not to. Sudowoodo is cool. For you gold and silver players back in the day, there was the Sudowoodo, I think, outside of... I want to say Violet City? Azalea? Very, I don't know. Oh, apparently it's not weak to ice anymore. That's cool. Or maybe it never was. See, I get kind of typings mixed up, like rock and ground and steel. I have a little bit of trouble sometimes of remembering what does and doesn't work. So, there's that. Oh, of course. And see, like I said, they all have hold items and super good berries and stuff. It's real annoying. Oh boy, it's gonna hurt. One thing Suzanne does not have going for her is her defense is kind of poo. So, she's definitely a bit of a, uh, as we say in the business, a glass cannon. You gotta get your licks in when you can. And... Hopefully, your one really strong attack, if they don't knock you out, is uh, is good. Okay, so, oof. I don't know. That did way more damage than I was expecting it to. I don't know if we're going to be... Okay, we do outspeed it. That's nice. Man, that Sudowoodo was strong. It has since fainted, though. That was kind of scary, wasn't it? 
And these Pokemon aren't giving nearly as much in the HP department, or not HP, in the experience. See, there it is. I did it. Even in the Elite Four, I've come this far and I can't avoid it. But yeah, we've come... Oh boy. This is gonna hurt. Ooh, Samuel, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yes, these are very strong Pokemons. And this is why you want to have a Bart. Bart's good for stalling. Roserade's a fantastic Pokemon. It's fast. It's got decent defense. Has a lot of stalling moves, which I really appreciate. Okay. I feel like Rock Polish on a Rock type is kind of pointless. Let's go ahead and throw, because I don't want to use Bart much more. Let's go ahead and throw a Leech Seed on it. Ooh, it's going to slam us. Heavily. We'll get Bart out of there. Yeah, this one, this this battle's a little bit more challenging than the last one. We don't quite, I mean, I do have very good counters for pretty much everything that Bertha's going to be throwing at us here, but some of it I wasn't quite expecting. And I don't really want to cheese it, so let's see. I do love cheese its though. Maybe like cheese its Okay. Let's not get too far removed from what we're doing, actually. This might be a moment where I don't, I don't switch. Ooh, okay. This is going to hurt. Oh, game, come on. No, no. Ugh. All right, that's one. Oof. I was hoping that would not happen, but it did. Hopefully the game gets a, a bit of a cheese as well. Okay, so we're all doing pretty decent on levels. The, the experience is kind of under... Ooh, Steven can learn Crunch. Sorry, I got really... Wow, I got really distracted. So we've had Bite for a long time. Crunch is the absolute superior upgrade. And I am going to contradict myself earlier. I said that I was going to fight everybody, but these episodes are long, and I kind of want to preserve a little bit of the excitement. All right. Um, Hippowdon is really strong, at the very least. I think this is a race. She got a big ace. Oh, it's a female Hippowdon. It's kind of that dark grayish color. This is one you definitely want to throw a, a leech seat on if we can. Oh, oh, well, this is bad. Okay, this is going to be horrible. That would have been very convenient if I would have been able to at least nail that. And we do know that it has. It does have Ice Fang. So they do a good job of, you know, at least creating movesets that are interesting and. You know, at least feel somewhat dynamic. I do appreciate that. Okay, so Powdown is pretty scary. It is pretty tanky. Oof. Let's see if Samuel can eat an earthquake. No, it cannot. I'm not really super upset about my entire team being alive for these fights. I was trying to make it happen, but at the same time, I kind of don't care just because I want to get out of these fights. The whole point is winning, and I already have plenty of plenty of experiences don't assume for an instant don't you know what assuming does oh and see this is what makes me mad I have a Weavile who for all intents and purposes has like 160 speed or something like that something absurd and it it gets outsped by a hip hippo hippo out on how in the good gosh dang is that even possible? Like, Miguel is statistically slower than, than Weavile. That is a, that's a big old barrel of dumb. Probably won't knock it out here. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, Pout on. It's got pretty strong physical defense and she's gonna use something. Yeah, I was gonna say, either she uses rest or something else like that. One of those times where I wish I had a max revive. I do not. Oh, and it has a berry to wake it up. Man, this game thinks of everything. That is amazing. Well, we're going to get ice fanged eventually, so... Might as well use our... Airborne advantage. We do have sky superiority. Man, that Hepowdon is strong. Even with a critical hit, that's the most we could do. 
Good job, Miguel, though. This is probably gonna hurt with the Ice Fang we're about to eat to the face. Oof. Not trying to sacrifice Miguel here, but I do want to do just enough damage that it doesn't use a full restore. Hopefully this does not... Oh, never mind. We just knocked it out. Two crits. Back to back. Boop. Cut it printed, everybody. That's, uh... That's 50% of the Elite Four done. How's that feel? And 50% of my team is dead. So... Sometimes you have to let your friends die for success. Oh, we beat Grandma. She's even wearing a scarf indoors. I'm sorry, you better. We beat her silly. Thanks. We can go as far as we want. Well, not like I needed your permission or anything. Okay. And we will go as far as we want next time. So thanks for watching, everybody. That was the first half of the Elite Four in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I've been D-Mike, and I'll see you next time. Bye.